the negative effects of chronic sleep deprivation and how to avoid them. Before I provide you with this video that I hope is very helpful and informative, I ask that you please like and subscribe to my channel as it really helps me out. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video, comment if you have any questions, or if you have a request for a future video. Or comment if you'd like to, you know, comment. Anyway, chronic long-term sleep deprivation. Short-term bouts of sleep deprivation are not nearly as problematic, so we're not going to focus on those. Chronic long-term sleep deprivation can result in decreased life expectancy. Those who slept less than five hours per night showed increased mortality risk from all causes by about 15%. Studies have shown that people who habitually sleep less than six hours per night are much more likely to have a higher than average body mass index and that people who sleep eight hours have the lowest BMI. One of the reasons for this is that poor sleep results in lower levels of leptin, which alerts the brain that it has enough food. It also has increased levels of ghrelin in a sleep-deprived state, which is a hormone that tells the body when you're hungry. In addition to this, fatigue from lack of sleep makes us less apt to be willing to exercise. There's also an increased risk of diabetes, with average increased insulin release, meaning that more of the food consumed gets absorbed by the body, which contributes to weight gain. Along with this naturally comes the decreased ability to process glucose in the body. There are also mood disorders associated with lack of sleep. Lack of sleep is correlated with depression, anxiety, mental distress, increased stress, or increased cortisol levels, increased anger, and mental exhaustion. It is also associated with a pessimistic attitude and a lack of sociability. Those who get enough sleep are better able to fight infection. Research even suggests that animals who obtain more sleep following microbial infection have a greater chance of survival. We can further this by looking at a cohort of those who are notoriously sleep deprived, medical doctors. Some doctors in most residents perform 24 hour shifts and or 24 hours of call. A 2004 study led by Dr. Charles Ziesler of the Division of Sleep Medicine at Harvard Medical School, found that hospitals could reduce the number of medical errors by as much as 36% by limiting an individual doctor's work shifts to 16 hours instead of 24 hours and reducing the total work schedule to no more than 80 hours per week maximum. The Institute of Medicine estimates based on recent high-quality naturalistic and epidemiological studies, that drowsy driving is responsible for fully 20% of all motor vehicle crashes. That would mean that drowsy driving causes approximately 1 million crashes, 500,000 injuries, and 8,000 deaths each year in the U.S. Now that we know how bad sleep deprivation obviously is for us, let's focus on how to make sure we get enough sleep. First, I think, is a mindset change. Dispel the notion in America that the less you sleep, the harder you work, or the more productive you are. This isn't necessarily something to brag about. In fact, in the long term, you're better off prioritizing sleep and finding ways to be more efficient in your day. This is actually a positive feedback loop. Sleeping more enables you to be more efficient, and being more efficient enables you to sleep more. I'm sure this will be covered in a later video, but here are some ways in which you might be able to become more efficient throughout your day. First of all, plan your day ahead of time. Prioritize your tasks based on two important things. Do, do the tasks first that are most important and require the most cognitive energy earlier in your day. What do I mean by cognitive energy? I just mean mentally difficult tasks. For instance, you're better off doing your quantum physics homework early in the morning when you're fresh as opposed to late at night when you're tired. Time your activities when you make a plan. Parkinson's law states that work expands to fill the time allotted for it. So, give yourself limited time to accomplish a task. Set a deadline and meet it. A way to further explain this is that it is analogous to the time when you've ever had a project or homework assignment that you were required to have in by a certain time. During this time, you probably focused more and cut out distractions until you got the assignment done and didn't have to worry about it. This is Parkinson's law in action. And speaking of distractions, that is our next point when it comes to efficiency. It's natural to get distracted, but there are ways to combat distraction to better your efficiency. One way that we might be able to do this is by engineering our life in a way that we don't get distracted or that the distractions are not readily available to us. 
have an, a noisy roommate that spends two hours talking to you about pointless topics, keep your door closed when you're working, or don't work or study at home. Have a video game on the same computer that you work on, uninstall it or go to the library so you'd look incredibly weird for playing it. Anyway, the point is, it is natural to be distracted, and it is best to have an environment that doesn't distract you so you can be more efficient. Improve your sleep hygiene. Or, in other words, maintain behaviors that promote good sleep and allow you to fall asleep faster. Exercise regularly. Don't drink too much alcohol prior to sleep, as it disrupts your ability to enter REM sleep. Sleep in a dark room. Blue light inhibits your body's ability to produce melatonin and can disrupt your circadian rhythm. While you can turn down blue light emission with some applications, it is probably still best to shut your phone off 30 minutes before bed. Try to get to bed and wake up at around the same time, as this betters your circadian rhythm management. Avoid caffeine or stimulant consumption at least 6 hours before bed. Caffeine is required to be at least less than 6 hours before bed, but other stimulants you'd have to look into the half-life to see when it exits your body in time. That's about all on that for now though. How much of this you choose to implement depends on how serious you are about your goals, what your philosophies are, and your willingness to change. Nevertheless, I hope everyone learned something, and I'll see you next time.